Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Water Trio Astrology Podcast. I'm here with my dear friends and colleagues, Alicia Youssef and Cassandra Tyndall, and we're going to be talking about the very exciting astrology for the week starting July 22nd. This is the week we have all been waiting for for months. Uh, but before we get into that, how are you both doing? Going yeah, great, Kel. Yeah, I'm good. I like yep. we've all got slightly brighter colours on the <laughs> episode, so I feel like there's a message in that. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that's Leo. Is, yeah, a bit of fire, a bit of Leo. Um, yeah, looking forward to uh, that getting out of water. It's always really nice, that elemental change from water to fire. I think it's one of the most notable feelings of... Um, inspiration and upliftedness and getting your mojo on after a period of you know potential melancholicness or um going slower you know water is not about speed whereas now we're starting to get our you know our engines running a little bit hopefully looking forward to that yes (laughs) very exciting well and the week really kicks off with a a, a, a sort of a drying out, getting brighter, getting warmer. It's like warmer, warmer, close. You know that game? What was that game called? I don't know. Is yeah, that name? cold, what hot. Mean? Cold, hot, cold, yeah. Cold, oh, no, cold, yeah. getting hot. Yeah, it's, because yeah. there's a temperature shift, isn't there? When a planet has been in a water sign, which has is cold by its nature, versus moving into a fire sign, which is more hot. And uh, there's definitely, you know, we do different things. We, we do more things when there's that sense of heat. Uh, But Cass, I think you're going to lead us off this week with a... Sun in Leo, yeah. There needs to be an interpretive dance or something. Interpretive dance. Well, I did have my Leo shirt on for last week's episode, so that's all you're getting from me. Right, okay, Um, right. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) No no dancing here. Um, Yeah, so Tuesday the 23rd here in Australia and Monday the 22nd in the US and the northern parts of the globe will have the sun move into its home sign of Leo. Yay, happy dance. Um, So that will definitely be, you know, that warmth, that radiance, that uplifting vibe that we can expect, you know. It's nice to kind of, you know, return home in Cancer, but then, you know, going back into Leo, it's that chance to kind of, I don't know, it's inspirational, it's uplifting, it's getting movement, getting fire, getting heat, getting that warmth and radiance. And of course, there's a new area of your solar horoscope or or your personal birth chart that is getting uh, lit by Leo for the next four weeks. So, that's like your solar invitation to you know, shine a little bit of cosmic light and heat into whatever area of your life that Leo rules. Um, so it's definitely kind of breaking out of that eclipse season, breaking out of the meat grinder with, you know, the worst is behind us for the time being. And now we can really look forward to that return of fire. So we've got the sun in Leo. Um, we've got the Mars in Leo, we've got Jupiter in Sag, so that's a little bit more moving into that beautiful August weather that um, brings that exuberance back. So I'm really looking forward to the sun, sun's move through Leo um, and, yeah, really spotlighting and shining in a way that we haven't had the opportunity to do for the last six weeks because it's all been about cancer. What about you girls? What are you excited for I'm about just excited. Leo? I'm just, just excited. excited. <laughs> For various reasons to do with the move and how it's set up and how long it takes to bring your bed when you're moving it internationally. When Peter and I have been asked, you know, are you excited about the move? We sort of look at each other because what we've been feeling in the weeks leading up to this point is not so much excitement. That There is excitement, but it's buried under levels of logistical, bureaucratic paperwork and documentation and getting this signed and have you got the internet hooked up and, you know, all of those sort of practical things that go into a move. And our response has been, we're both looking forward to the end of July when our stuff arrives and we can be properly set up in our new home because we've been in this transient sort of hotel Airbnb situation for almost a month now. And... It wasn't until I sort of looked into the astrology of July that I realized how much nicer the astrological skies were as soon as the sun moves into Leo. Yeah. And so for you guys, you've got the sun in Leo. So you've got a new stability or fixed Leo, but the excitement that comes with it. 
you yeah, know, and, new, that, and it's sixth house boring all the newness. Itself. Yeah, yeah, it's sixth house for me. It's actually tenth house for my husband, and you know, I've said a lot. Like this move is very driven by him and his career. I've always, you know, loved Europe and been happy to spend time there, but it was his job that's really taking us there now. And so that chance for him to really shine. Um, but I do, you mentioned something there, Cass, that I think is a really critical sun quality, um, which is stability. Mm. The sun cycle is the most consistent or stable of all of the planets over the course of the year. And so one thing the sun does is it creates this consistency. And the sun in Leo is just about finding those new steady rhythms that are affirming or life enhancing or even health enhancing, if you like. Yeah, totally. Um, the sun, yeah, there's the stability, it's gravity kind of holds up the solar system. I think I, I was doing some research just yesterday and it was saying something about the sun is 99.8% of like its mass is 99.8% of the solar system. So when we have this joke that Leo and the sun is the center of the universe, it's not the center of it. It kind of is, it is it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the solar so system. The, yeah, yeah. That's why it's called a solar system. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Right. So yeah. yeah, there is this thing, you know, when, when Leo comes home to this, we can, um, you know, ref return to that stability and that center of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to give a shout out to my dear friend. He's like my brother, uh, Aaron Cheek. And on his website, um, he oh, yeah. has a beautiful poem about, he's a Leo. So I remember one time we were having this conversation and I was sort of feeling a little bit like lost in a situation. And he had this beautiful way of returning, like finding your center again. And on his website, he has the most beautiful poem about the sun in Leo. And when there is trauma or turbulence or changing times that when you come back to that center or that stability, um, you know, it's like about giving your light, but not losing your light. And I just thought it was such a beautiful thing. And every now and then, um, you know, when I'm doing my regular work or I'm doing this or that and the other, I often read his poem and I find it so stabilizing, life affirming, um, and inspiring at the same time. So perhaps we'll pop a link in the show notes so you can read that poem what because... What is the poem called? Do you recall? Oh, this is going to be a good question. So let me look it up. Um, I can't remember, but I can ask him and we'll pop that in the show notes. But yeah, it's a beautiful poem and it's one of my regular... Um, Gravity and light. One of my, yeah, one of my regular things that kind of you know, when you just need that little bit of a dose of an uplift or an inspiration or like a, you know, a cup of coffee in word form. <laughs> That's how it is for me. I love it. I love it. Which you're kind of alluding to, Cass, the, the enhancing, affirming, uplifting qualities of the sun, that the sun is what dispels melancholy. It brings confidence. It brings a sense of hope. And so after these dark seven or eight weeks with the sun stuck in cancer and all the Saturn Capricorn influences. This is very much like the sun coming out after a very cloudy, melancholy period. Mm -hmm. What about yeah, you, Leish? Very we, much so. We're using the lockout right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking back. I had this beautiful friend um, in London. He was my gay husband back then. and Your husband? Yes, and he was a Leo, and basically the whole month of Leo was his the festival of Leo for him. And I don't think it's Leo season. I think it's like the festival of Leo. You know, it's all about celebrating. It's all about getting out there. But for him, what he used to do is like almost every day he planned some kind of activity. Like we'd go on picnics, we'd go for cocktails, we'd go to the theater, and it wasn't just about him. It was about all of us, all of us. Mm. There was a group of about eight or 10 of us that would get together and celebrate with him. And it was almost like we were all having a birthday by yeah. sharing in his celebrations in his birthday. And I think so much of what you were both saying is captured in this story of he was just a person that drew people to him, but he had a very tight knit loyal crowd that he wanted to share with and that I think with that Leo energy they will shine out light to all but they really value loyalty as well so there is this thing about you know coming out of the, the dark 
you know it's like winter is winter's been we're, we're done with it and it's time to come out into the light time to come out and just celebrate enjoy life be in that playful leo energy and doing those things that bring you pleasure and bring you and bring fun and a, and a light-hearted feeling you know leo rules the heart and i feel like it's this time to like we've done the hard yards we've done the satin discipline we've done the cancer sensitivity now it's time to go okay what will lighten me up what will help me feel better so even if you're not a leo go and have a festival of leo this month go and enjoy take that sun in leo energy and, and follow it through all month five star luxury ahead yes okay well i've just uh messaged uh aaron and the poem is called gravity and light yes. and that's on his website uh which is aaroncheek.com beautiful so if you want a little bit of that solar inspiration um it's definitely a beautiful piece of writing it is beautiful just beautiful he's such a poet really uh so he wrote yeah. it did he? <laughs> yes yeah yeah Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So Sun in Leo, uh, massive change for this week. Mm -hmm. And then uh, adding some extra sweetness midweek. Leishi, what do you want to tell us about? So we have Mercury and Venus meeting up. So Venus is applying to Mercury, who is moving backwards. And they're meeting up in still sweet, sensitive cancer. But I feel like, you know, there's there's a lot. It's, it's a lot nicer, um, the message we've got to say. And really, we've learnt a lot about ourselves over the last seven or eight weeks. And it's like <laughs> we've, we've, we've consolidated who we are, consolidated what we want. We had a look to the future to see where we want to go. And so now it's a time to really share our values, what we've, what we've prioritised and where we want to be. Um, so Mercury has a chance to really speak this out. So this is on Thursday morning here in Australia, the 25th and Wednesday afternoon um, in the States. And I don't know, there's just a feeling of sweet words, you know, words, you know, communications that unify and bring people together. Um, you know, there's a, a social element to this, but with your clan, with your family, you know, with those Cancerian people you love to be sensitive with or, or protect or, or um, yeah, bring, bring good boundaries around. So this could be vulnerable conversations where you're sharing your feelings about something. But I get us, you know, with, with Venus there, it's going to feel good um, to be when you share in a vulnerable with somebody else, then they're going to be able to acknowledge you and see who you truly are and often offer really lovely reflective words to you too. So I'm looking forward to this aspect as well. What about you, Gals? Cass? I mean, I can babble on about this aspect for about 25 minutes. So I just think I ag agreed. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to this as well. Um, I definitely think that this is just going to be a beautiful, you know, of course, different to the sun in Leo, but still got those boosted or supportive or pushing forward and out qualities. I mean, it's still uh, cancer after all, but, you know, Mercury and Venus together, it's, almost like, you know, the aspect of selling ice to an Eskimo, right? Like it's definitely with the sun and Leo combined, it's definitely got this beautiful exuberance and, you know, getting, getting your needs met, but, you know, not taking and, you know, it's a bit reciprocative. It's yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. How about you, Kel? What's your rant on that one? Oh, yeah, look, just all the sweet words, really. I mean, A, I'm a big fan of Mercury-Venus aspects and, you know, the, you can have a sextile between Mercury and Venus or you can have a conjunction between these two planets, like the, the two traditional aspects you can have. And either one of them is a great indicator for creativity and for sweetness or a Moorish quality with words and ideas. And because Mercury, this Mercury-Venus is in Cancer, there is that sort of affectionate bonding kind of quality. And I do think, you know, this the whole tone of this week has a repair and revitalize feel after what yeah. we've been through. And this Mercury, Mercury's retrograde. So he's backing up down the street and Venus comes along to sit in the car with him or to hang out. And there is this sense of revisiting maybe a sensitive or vulnerable topic but being able to do so in a way where you get more support or you can feel more heard. 
Um, it might be that you wanted to catch up with someone and it got delayed and now you can reschedule, but it does feel like having a second chance to make a connection or to find that support. Uh, and so, yeah, it's got a real yummy, yeah, repair, reconnect feel to it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this aspect as well. Yeah, and when it's exact, actually, it, the moon will be in Taurus too, mm. uh, it's just which will be tasty. ruling all of that. Yeah. So yummy. Yeah. Yeah, really grounded and, and really, yeah. I mean, just it makes me all think... All the nice things. Yeah, all the nice... Like, it makes me think of time with my sisters, who I adore, or time with my close girlfriends, or quality time with my partner. You know, it's just doing things you love with people that you genuinely feel cared for and feel safe with. Basically. yeah yeah those yeah. people that fill your bucket fill your cup those yeah. kind of people yeah. yeah totally yeah when i think of venus i always think about it as okay well, what do you want to do when all the bills are paid all the jobs are done and you can just do whatever you want and so yeah. this would be you know call your friends or arrange those catch-ups or reconnect with those that you never got a chance to before because of meat grinder stuff and this is you know kind of you know coming back out and reconnecting and reestablishing and reaffirming so yeah, yeah. And the moon in Taurus applying to Uranus it's like mm -hmm. you know maybe like suddenly going hey let's do this or let's go yeah. here and let's do these things together and yeah. it working out like good food the moment. good wine yeah yeah there yeah. definitely is going to be some good food there'll be good eating, yeah. basically yeah. a bit of chocolate <laughs> bit of chocolate maybe <laughs> chocolate wine yeah. but more than that like a feast basically yes it the feast for the senses yeah, like my Lebanese grandmother just overfeeding everyone as a <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes. My mother-in-law, she is the queen yes. of doing that. I think last time we went there, she went through 20 kilos of sugar in four weeks. <gasps> because she doesn't just bake for a few people. She bakes for about 20. So she'll the bake village. a tray of biscuits that are like that big or a slice. And, you know, and you only have two meals a day. You kind of have a really late breakfast and an early, like a, like a late lunch dinner. And so I, my body wasn't used to it. So all I used to do is get into the sweets at about eight o'clock at night. Um, I always went to bed with the biggest sugar hangover, but it was the best. It was the best. That's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Um, Venus overdoing sugar? No. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got the moon in Venus's sign and Venus in the moon sign, so there is that beautiful connection between the two there. But honestly, the more we get into this week, the more I am just loving it compared yeah. to... I always yeah. knew this week was going to be a good week. <laughs> And now, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't want to oversell it because depending no. on what people have in their own individual charts, as much as the astro weather is sunshiny and beautiful times, if you're having a personal Saturn transit or a personal Pluto transit, it could still be uh, a little intense. But generally speaking, you don't need an umbrella to get out of the house this week. That's for sure. Like a, no. a figurative okay. umbrella. I'm always saying to my children, you know, first the work, then the pleasure, you know. So if, if it's a weekend morning, let's tidy up the house, let's do all of that, and then we can go out and have fun, and then we can go out and do that. So it feels like we've done the hard work. Now it's time to really enjoy and, and get into the fun of that. So enjoy, peeps. It's lovely. So what's the next aspect, Cass? I think it's... Oh, that's you, Kel. Tuesday. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually one of my favourite aspects of the whole month of July, which is Mars in Leo, Trine, Jupiter and Sag. And that's coming up. Uh, it's actually Thursday the 25th, I think, for... Uh, it's us in Canada and the States early in the morning and it'll be later mm. in the evening for you gals down in Australia. And yeah. this is kind of the aspect that sets up the next few weeks because... Now the planets are all through, they're sort of swimming in circles in Cancer and they're shining steady in Leo. And as they do, they get to benefit from the golden light of Jupiter and Sag, which is the biggest blessing we could have. Juice. And it's certainly like the best thing going on astrologically in 2019. So this is sort of the, the beginning or even the progress of adventure, of new storylines in your life starting to unfold Mars Jupiter is about confidence. It's about courage. It's, I believe I can do this and I'm willing to take a leap of faith or a risk to give it a shot. So 
it's got so mm-hmm. much kind of hope and movement and forward thinking. It's very much go for gold, you know, take the risk and just back yourself and see where it can take you. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, we really don't have much Jupiter contact this month. Um, this is kind of the first of, of what's been in there. So it's like we've been going through the tricky hard yards and now we're back into contacting Jupiter, back into calling Jupiter up and going, hello, we're back. We want to hear from you again. Where are the big visions? Where's the hope? Where's the optimism? And how can we bring that in? So this would be a time to really, you know, put some energy, put some action into those those big plans that we've had because we're coming, what, how, when does Jupiter go direct again? It's early next month, isn't it? It's the 10th yeah. of August. Yep. Yeah. Yep. At 14 yep. degrees where this aspect takes place. And so that, yeah. yeah, you know, that's exactly the same sort of point I was going to make, Leishi, is that we haven't, apart from the moon's monthly ping, we haven't heard from Jupiter for quite some time. So mm-hmm. Mars comes along and energizes and goads him a little bit as he's starting to prepare to station direct. So, you know, watch this space around the end of this week because it might sort of show some uh, progress or potential um, around, you know, what Jupiter may deliver as he stations direct in the next uh, couple of weeks. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's just really, it's it's so exciting. I'm just thrilled. (laughs) I'm just happy to have this like energy and this fire, you know, fire to the ancients was considered to be the most divine element. It was the element that moves upwards where all the wisdom comes from, you know, the the heavens, if you like. And so two pretty warm planets in fire signs, there is this sense of connecting with some kind of inspiration, whether you want to call it higher purpose or that vision of where you want to go and how you want your life to grow and expand. Um, it's very much about taking action. So, yeah. yeah. And Venus, you know, we didn't talk about it, but Venus does also move into Leo on Sunday as well. Um, it's Saturday, late Saturday night in the US. So, you know, there is that extra juice as well with Venus moving in there too. So it really is a light, fun week. Yeah, a shift in energy. Um, Cass, you said something at the start of the show today about the change from water to fire and, and how dramatic it is. You know, water signs have the cool, wet combination and fire signs are hot and dry. Mm. So all the mm. qualities kind of shift, which makes yeah. it a more marked change. Like there's no continuity here. And, uh, you know, some of us will love it. Some of some people might find it a bit too much, but we've had a lot of cold and wet lately and... Uh, some hate mm-hmm. is good yeah yeah, yeah and i really, really love the sorry leishi no you go Cass. um i really love the feel of water to fire when you're undergoing secondary progression it's like yes. that's the best like mm-hmm. yeah you know yeah. um and i remember when i had one um a few years ago it was just all of a sudden it was like awakening like going from water where you're struggling making decisions or you're dragging your heels a little bit and then all of a sudden you wake up one day and all of a sudden life just looks very clear, uh, very uh, direct, very focused and very energised. And so this is sort of the kind of feel that we can expect. And it's not just, you know, Jupiter being activated for the first time in a while. It's Mars in Leo doing that. So we've got like fire on fire, on fire sort of thing. So you know, there's going to be some beautiful opportunity to get some energy, get some mojo, get some momentum, get some inspiration after this sort of sluggishy kind of, I mean, you know, and cancer's got its good stuff about it, but, you know, when you dwell in something for too long, you get that, you know, the melancholy or the um, staying in the past or not moving forward. So this is definitely a wonderful cosmic push into new directions, um, big picture stuff, thinking about the future, you know, moving towards, um, you know, the next, so what are we, July? We've only got Jupiter and Sag until December. So this is like, okay, this is the last leg, the third part of this cycle and let's like get cracking and let's make the most of this last bit of Jupiter and Sag. Yeah, totally. And I also feel like that, you know, the myth of Prometheus, where he went and stole the fire from the gods to give it 
to the humans. And that was actually what brought us up above the level of the beasts, you know, gave us wisdom, gave us knowledge, gave us understanding. It wasn't literally fire so we could cook our food. It was the idea of knowledge and and, and awareness, a, a whole new level of awareness that, you know, I think therefore I am kind of stuff. So there is that real wisdom piece with this fire of, okay, how can I step into a place of new knowledge, of new understanding and use it to leverage forward into creating new and different ways to be, um, you know, not just being connected to the wisdom but integrating it and internalizing it so it becomes your own so you can hold on to this feeling and sense yeah bringing it inside so mm. a huge shift in the astro weather with this week so do let us know in the comments below uh how you experience that do you feel the lift do you enjoy the clarity that might be coming through or even the increase in physical energy and motivation. And as Leish mentioned last week, we are now available on Spotify in addition to iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. So if you're listening just with the audio and you want a visual, you can find us on YouTube. If you're on YouTube and you want to be able to have a downloadable app, uh, those options are available as well. What do you each have going on this week? Anything, um, any final words or anything you guys want to share with our listeners? Oh, I don't know. I, I might have some things in the pipeline. I like, yeah, I've got some ideas. I don't know whether they'll be in fruition then or whether I'll be launching them then. It's a bit too far in the future at the moment for me. Okay. What about you, Cass? Well, you know, this aspect of the moment, this day of the month, um, I am doing a webinar all about the light of the moon and her movement through your chart. So looking a little bit about... Um, the lunar phases and how they progress and how that can enhance your predictive work. So all the details are on my website, uh, CassandraTindall.com on the events tab. You can sign up for that. And of course, get the recording after if our time zones don't align. Fantastic. Well, Cass, it must be webinar time. Uh, I am actually going to be, I'm working this week, uh, but when I'm uh, and then I go on holidays for a little bit. So August 10th is my next webinar, Saturday, August 10th. So it's a bit of an early announcement, but the uh, tickets, uh, registration is open at the early bird rate, if you like. The topic is PowerPoints, Activate Your Ascendant and Midheaven. And I'll be looking at how you can unlock your potential by working with the planets that are associated with your Ascendant and Midheaven. So you'll learn how to figure out two of your most important planets, We'll do a bit of a deep dive about how these points really help prod you forward in your life. So uh, one of those, cool. just like yours, Cass, I guess, and your webinar is going to happen before mine and people can absolutely sign up for both. Moon phases are such an important topic. Um, so your webinar is coming up this week, Cass? Correct. It's on uh, the 25th on the 25th. Mars. Yeah. 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 On Mars Jupiter Day. Love it. Mars That's Jupiter Day. Day. Yeah. Fantastic. Exalted moon. Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, struggled good. finding the right, you know, election, like, and, you know, and also... Yeah, it was a hard month to, for elections. Totally. And also just a, a webinar time that's going to suit, you know, a broad spectrum of people time-wise. Um, so, yeah, factoring in all those components, doing electional work is always a fun time. So you spend about an hour, click, 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 click. Oh, maybe I'll lose this day, you know. <laughs> that's uh, the work of electional astrology is clicking through solar fire. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's part of the fun. So a few events to come up and enjoy. Um, we wish you all a wonderful week, uh, sun in Leo season beginning. And uh, we look forward to chatting with you all next week. See Thanks, you everyone. Later. Bye for now. Ciao. Bye. For now.